Hello fellow compounders. Today we're going to be hunting for potential 100 baggers for my coffee can portfolio. I'll show you what I look for in potential 100 bagger stocks. If all goes well, we'll have a potential 100 bagger candidate for my coffee can. So let's get started. First, let's get some terminology out of the way. The term 100 bagger refers to stocks that return 100 times their initial investment. Peter Lynch, in his book, One Up on Wall Street, believes that the expression came from baseball, where a home run is referred to a four bagger. The coffee can approach is used to mentally trick you to help you hold on to stocks so they can compound over a long time. Basically, it's a buy it and forget it system. I explain the coffee can investing approach in this video. Oh, and before I forget, please remember, this video is for educational purposes only, and it's not intended to be financial advice. I am not your financial advisor. You're responsible for your own financial decisions. So we know that 100 baggers exist. Here's a list of 10 100 baggers out of 365 that were studied in the book 100 baggers by Christopher Mayer, published in 2015. We have Berkshire Hathaway, Kansas City Southern, Altra Group, Walmart, Holy Frontier Corp, Franklin Resources, Forest Laboratories, TJX Companies, Southwest Airlines, and New Market Corp. If you had bought a share of Berkshire Hathaway at the time Warren Buffett started buying, you would have made 100 times on your money in 19 years. In fact, by 2015, you would have made 18,261 times your original investment in Berkshire Hathaway. How crazy is that? On that list, there is Walmart, which you probably know, and if you don't, I suggest reading the book Sam Walton, Made in America. And also we see transportation companies, Kansas City, Southern, a railroad, and Southwest Airlines. In fact, 100 baggers come in all industries, in all flavors. There have been two books that have studied 100 baggers. 100 to 1 in the Stock Market by Thomas Phelps and 100 baggers by Christopher Mayers. Thomas Phelps' book was the first to shine the light on 100 baggers. He studied 365 of them from 1932 to 1971. Mayer's book was inspired by Phelps and he updated the study with another 365 stocks that achieved 100 bagger dome between 1967 and 2014. It was a pure coincidence that both had 365 stocks in their study. So let me share a couple of interesting observations that I deduced from reading Phelps and Mayer's books. Number one, it's all about compounding consistently over a long period of time. Any business that can grow earnings over a long time will become a hundred bagger at some point. That's even if they are modest earnings. If we look at this chart from Mayer's book, a stock that compounds at a 5% will take around 94 years to become a 100 bagger. While one that can compound at 52% annually will become a 100 bagger in 11 years. So the key component is time and consistency. Number two, my objective will be to find 100 baggers that can get there in 35 years or less. This means a 14% average annual return or better. Number three, it takes time to grow a 100 bagger. 35 years is a long time, so it would be very helpful to use a coffee can investing approach. Number four, there are two factors that speed up the time needed for a stock to obtain 100 times return on investment. The factors are earnings growth rate and multiple expansion, which means buying growth at a good price. Now the question is, how do we identify the potential 100 baggers? In his book, 100 Bagger, Christopher Mayer identified several characteristics of 100 baggers. Here are the five that I believe are most important. Number one, growth. Growth, growth, and more growth. We need to find companies that have a large addressable market to go after. So we want companies that have accelerated revenue growth. For example, companies that can expand from local to regional or from regional to national, like investing in Starbucks, Walmart, or Home Depot in their early years. Number two, buying at a low multiple. 
that means a peg less than one. This means a price to earnings growth rate less than one. We want to buy accelerating growth cheap. By the way, this price to earnings growth rate was made popular by Peter Lynch in his book, One Up on Wall Street, where he's hunting for 10 baggers. I highly suggest reading it. It's one of my favorite investment books of all time. Number three, having a moat or sustainable competitive advantage. This allows the business to continuously maintain its earnings growth rate. A good indicator that a business has a moat is a consistent return on invested capital. This means that it can maintain its profit margins due to its advantage. Number four, these stocks are usually small caps. Starting small means that the business is nimble and motivated to grow. It has a long runway and a large addressable market. For example, it's easier to double revenues of a $100 million business than to double revenues of a $10 billion business. When Apple was a small company, it was easy to increase revenues because going from selling 1 million iPhones to selling 2 million iPhones was easy. Today's Apple, at a $2 trillion market capitalization, is currently selling 240 million iPhones per year. So it's very challenging for at that scale to double and go from 240 million to 480 million iPhones within a year. So small companies grow faster than large. Number five, owner operators are preferred. We want our CEOs to act as owners and to actually have a good stake uh, of their money invested. No one takes care of business as much as an owner. This is one of the reasons that Starbucks made a turnaround when Howard Schultz returned from his first retirement. Or the same with Apple when Steve Jobs returned. And by the way, the most successful, I would think, is Buffett, who has led Berkshire Hathaway for over 50 years and has compounded Berkshire returns by around 20% per year since he became CEO and major owner of the company. So here's my process for 100 baggers. Number one, I use a stock database screener. Personally, I use Morningstar, but you could use Morningstar or some other product. Number two, I'll screen for companies with a market cap of less than $5 billion. I think less than five, in my mind, is a medium or small cap. So it's small enough where it has space to grow. Number three, I'm looking for an earnings per share growth rate above 20% or a revenue growth rate above 30% per year. Number four, I'm looking also for return on invested capital of greater than 20% or a return on equity of greater than 20%, depending on what your database provides. Number five, I also want companies that have a narrow or wide moat. Uh, I'm using the uh, Morningstar metric, um, at least for the screener. Then I will take a look specifically at each company once it pops out of the database. Number six, I'm looking for a really good price. So I'm looking for companies that are selling below their fair value estimate. Uh, so that means I'm looking for a price to fair value estimate ratio of less than 6.6. .6. That means a 40% discount or higher. Seven, I'll take out all the businesses that I don't know or I'm not interested in. I remember that we buy businesses that we understand or are capable of understanding. Number eight, I'll study the list and read about the company and the CEO to make sure that it fits the parameter or it fits the characteristics of a potential 100 bagger. And finally, nine, I select the candidate and place it on a buy list and the buy below price that I would buy at. So once I've identified a 100 bagger candidate, I do two things. One, I coffee can it, which means that I buy and hold it for at least 10 years. And two, I monitor their position once a year and add to that position if it's attractive at that point in time. So after running the screen on Morningstar today, October 20, 2022, and going through those nine steps, here's the name I come up with. Malibu Boats, ticker symbol MBUU. They are the leading designer and manufacturer of power boats in the United States. It has a market cap of around $1 billion 
and its addressable market double in the last five years. They are led by the founder and have a five-year average return on invested capital of around 22%, which shows signs of a stable moat or, or competitive advantage. I already own this stock in my 2022 Coffee Camp portfolio. I will be adding more at these prices. Currently, it's trading around $48, and it's trading at a peg ratio of 0.15, which is extremely cheap. It's less than one. Remember, it's a price to earnings growth ratio. And it also has a PE price to earnings ratio of 6.5. Its price to fair value estimated is 0.49, which is means that it's trading at about 50% or 51% discount. It's beaten down because there's fears of recession. I'm quite sure that people will come back to buy boats. And by the way, I suspect that many of their customers won't feel the impact of a recession. For me, this is a screaming buy. So there you have it, Malibu Boats, my prediction of the next 100 bagger in my coffee can portfolio. Thanks for watching and remember to always be compounding. See you in the next video. Take care.